Dieter here, Beer Idiots, another live interview. One of the more notable breweries in West Flanders, in the Pearl of Anzegem. Brouwerij het verzet. Welkom, Koen van Lanker. How are you? Hi, right. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, so tell me a bit, uh, Brewery Verzet, the resistance in English, uh, how did it start? It? Um, so we founded the company with, with uh, three friends, so myself, Alex and Yuran. Um, we graduated together at a brewing school in Ghent, 2008. Um, we started brewing for, uh, for different uh, breweries. But to see each other again, we started home brewing. Um, yeah, just uh, to um, uh, to see each other and to um, exchange uh, knowledge that we that we got in our jobs. Um, and from one thing came another, um, and we started uh, a Verzet company in two thousand eleven. Yeah, and. You focus on Belgium style beers, but with a little twist on. Explain that a bit. Exactly. So, um, for that means resistance. So, we wanted to do things differently, but we have a, a huge uh, respect for the Belgian tradition. So, um, especially back then, we, we liked the, the Trappists, uh, Orval. Um, yeah, really classical um, styles, but uh, very pronounced in their style. Um, so we were a fan of that. So uh, we wanted to do, to do things different, differently, but um, to us, um, this tradition in Belgium, we, we didn't want to look at American breweries and copy them. We wanted to um, start with Belgian breweries or Belgian styles and do our own thing uh, with that. And what did re that reflected in the beginning of your beer portfolio? Or what was the style of your first beers? And are they still in the portfolio? So the first beer we made was a, a Rebel Local. So it's our approach of a Belgian triple, but a little bit more um, more hoppy, a little bit more bitter also. So uh, our inspiration was uh, West Malle Triple, uh, Hildenberg, Vom Dranke, all kinds of, kinds of stuff like that. Um, and the second brew we made was the uh, uh, because uh, we were really fan of the style, uh, a bit forgotten style, typical for the region of um, Southwest Flanders, um, something our fathers and uncles um, Partied on when they when they went to the bars when they were young, they were drunk uh, with that kind of style of beer. Um, and to honor the style, we wanted to make it ourselves. So that's why we started um, barrel aging uh, the Flemish red and uh, do uh, our own thing with it. So yeah, those were the, were the two uh, first beer we made, and we still have them in the portfolio. You do a lot of barrel aging. What is the amount of barrel aging in your um, it's rather small. Uh, we do about um, twenty percent barrel aging, and the uh, main part of that, uh, like eighteen percent, is uh, Flemish red. So we don't do a lot of um, barrel aging where the history of the barrel is very important. So we don't want uh, the taste of of the liquor. Uh, that was inside the barrel in the beer so we sometimes do that but it's not our core uh, business so we age flemish red and red wine barrels just um for the yeah, for the process of souring uh, because the the yeast and the bacteria live in this wood and they need a little bit of oxygen so we need the the barrel as a um a recipient uh, and not really for uh, as an ingredient. Uh, tell us a bit of the hardware of the brewery. I've been there several times. It's uh, quite amazing. But which choices did you make um, in terms of hardware to do and not to do? 
So, uh, as you know, we, we first rented um, facilities. So we brewed at the Ranke, for instance, the biggest part. Um, back then, I was working for the proof and um, Alex was working for uh, Omer van der Henste. Um, so that allowed us to, um, to see a lot of hardware and a lot of uh, brew houses and uh, bottle machines. And um, we could learn from mistakes from other breweries. Um, so that was a, an advantage we had. So we had several years to think about the, the setup. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is we, uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of money. Uh, our parents are not rich. So um, uh, of course that uh, um, helped us to, to do some decisions. Um, so what we were looking for was a pretty cheap brew house with not too many um, automation and not too many uh, um, yeah, facilities to, to make the brewing more easy. We like to work with our hands so it, it could be very simple. But we just wanted a brew house that uh, was um, like um, that could could go for uh, several uh, years, um, but uh, affordable. And we found that in a in a Czech um, Czech Republic um, factory, uh, and the. Uh, the tip uh, came from um, from uh, De La Seine because uh, they they were looking for brew houses a little bit before us, and that was one of the places they went to um, to decide what which brewery they wanted to do, and uh, they recommended uh, this brew house. So uh, that's a bit uh, why we chose this one, and we don't regret it because it's really good and simple uh, machinery. And that was a bit staff wise, you also expanded. Uh, some people left, some people uh, came to join uh, the resistance company, of course. Uh, tell us a bit about mm -hmm. that. Uh, there's not really people uh, who left us except for Euron. So, we, uh, as you know, we started with Tree, and um, yeah, he's the only one who left because he uh, just moved to the, to the US. So, it was not um, uh, practical anymore to. Uh, to do a lot of work with us. So that's, um, that's why, uh, he's not in the company anymore. Um, so it's me and Alex who do the, the main, uh, the main things, uh, the main decisions. And, uh, in, um, 2000, um, uh, let me guess 2015, uh, Jens came to join us because Alex and me were not talented in, uh, in selling beer. So we had to uh, scout someone who uh, was good in that. And Jens is the perfect guy for that. Um, and we three are like the, the core of uh, Vizet. Most of the decisions we make uh, uh, amongst us. Um, and then we have uh, Marie who does the lab for us. So she, do she does the quality control of every batch in every uh, stage. She does that um, on Monday, so just one day in the week. And then we have Leopold and, uh, and Frey who uh, help us to do um, degustations in, uh, in stores um, and um, helping us uh, doing the summer bar, which we do from June to uh, August in the brewery. Um, so they help us with um, yeah, with selling the beer uh, and helping Jens um, to do his job, but it's not on a full-time base. In the beginning, um, educating the people about beer style and what is a different beer style than the typical Flemish styles, was that something you needed to do in order to uh, get the beer to the people? Or is the style Belgium enough that it found naturally his way to, uh, to the people? It depends a bit on, on, on what, what beer, but um, yeah, it, was not, it was not always easy, but I think because, um, because we wanted to do differently, we stand out a bit. Uh, I mean, like label wise, um, the approach, um, we always make, um, I do some uh, extra work to have a nice uh, 
um, spot on the beer festivals. So we, uh, uh, the stand we make is uh, we we do some effort for it. So people are curious, and um, that is our advantage, I think. Uh, and people who are adventurous enough to try something new um, will find us and will find a good beer in our portfolio, I think. But um, for yeah, for the mainstream, um, maybe some of our beers are a little bit uh, yeah, a bridge too far. I don't know. Okay, you mentioned already the branding. Yeah, Frisette is well known for have a consistent branding uh, type. How do you do that? How do you? F- is that one person he designs it and he comes to you to get uh, approval, or is that all natural? So yeah, it was not always like that. So um, in 2016, we um, we changed uh, the labels because. Uh, you could not tell uh, the beers were from one brewery. There was no consist- consistency. We wanted to change that. Um, and in 2016, we uh, uh, we looked for like um, a company who could help us in uh, in, uh, in finding a house style, or uh, yeah, like a typical style for a brewery. Um, and we had like two. Um, big companies uh, who came with an offer which was very very expensive and they didn't understand what we wanted to do so um, we were a bit scared that we wouldn't find someone to help us but then we found a small company uh, in Kortrijk and um, the connection was uh, was okay immediately so they they understand us and they um, they knew what we wanted and um, now we we work we still work with them and what we do is we um, when we have a new beer we um, we give some words to uh, to our drawer so we have an artist uh, we work together with it's one of the best friends of alex we give him some words he he does something with it in his crazy mind and gets some things on paper and we select some uh, of his drawings and we we uh, sent that to the to the little company in Kortrijk, and they uh, put it in uh, in a label, put all the legal stuff uh, on the label, and uh, and then it's ready. Okay, very cool. So yeah, the, the bond with the company needs to be there uh, that they know it. Is. Yeah, it's very important for us. Um, looking back in retrospect, uh, all these years of being a brewer, what is the most fun and what is the hardest part? I think everyone who enters the business uh, enters because yeah, making beer is nice. It's a nice um, product to work with. Uh, lots of people like it too. And I think the um, uh, creativity is the most uh, yeah, the most cool thing to to do in a brewery. I think so. The creativity creativity you have to do to um to make a new beer to um to make a new label uh, the idea behind it that's uh, the fun stuff i think um the less uh, m- the more or less um, fun stuff is uh, excises and uh, invoicing uh, all the yeah all the, all the stuff like that but i think during the years we um we found fun in doing that too, um, because you wanted to to do it right and you wanted to do it efficient. And the the search to efficiency can be fun too. Um, of course, it's not as fun as uh, inventing a new beer or something, but um, it's something you just have have to do. And it's, yeah, it's more um, fun when you when you like doing it uh, because you still have to do it. So um, you have to see the fun in it but it's not the most fun part uh, of course from the brewery uh, what are some things we could never expect from a brewery uh, <laughs> um, good question um, um, <laughs> maybe not um, but I I think I, I know we're never going to make a sweet fruit beer 
uh, style uh, Liefmans Vitesse or something. That I know for sure we're never going to make as long as Alex, Jens and me are going to live. Um, you don't know, maybe in the future generations, uh, I hope not, but uh, because we're, we're of course the first generation, um, but we wanted to uh, keep the, uh, the spirit from the brewery uh, alive also for the eventually maybe uh, future generations um yeah there are some some values we uh, we want to respect so we want to stay independent we want to make beers we um we like to drink ourselves um so yeah the ethics in uh, in our company are that we are um, never choosing for the money first uh, of course, we're a company. We have to make money to uh, to uh, pay uh, to pay the bills. But uh, the love for the for the product always has to be uh, in front. So I hope you will never uh, see otherwise in our company. Um, due to the Corona pandemic. A lot of brewers are also shipping towards their end customers more. You guys also are doing that. Um, is that something they're probably for longer to stay or is that just a temporary thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, we um, we had to do something. So that's why we uh, started a web shop uh, in a pretty, uh, pretty fast way. Um, and it works well. That way we could um, minimalize our losses during this uh, pandemic uh, but it worked really good and we think there is a future in it too uh, we have to look how we are going to do it because um, we um, we respect the uh, the logistic part of the belgian brewing scene so we work as much as possible with with the uh, distributors uh, we want to keep doing that, but uh, I think we cannot ignore um, that the world is changing and a web shop is something you have to have maybe. So we're definitely going to do it for merchandise, but probably are going to continue doing this also for, um, uh, for the actual beer. Um, but we're not going to uh, drive it ourselves to, uh, to the people's door like we do now. Um, because it's not uh, affordable. Um, how do, is your summer plans now? Now all the festivals are cancelled. Is it more focusing on the brewery and doing something for the community now? Um, what we are doing now is uh, preparing ourselves to uh, open our summer bar. So probably next week we are going to start. Um, we had a we had a summer um, plant with all kinds of uh, stuff doing in the, to do in, in this summer bar. A lot of them are not going to be possible. But uh, yesterday we uh, we decided some things, and uh, we still going to do uh, invite some bands and uh, and DJs uh, and put a lot of effort in this summer bar um, just to um, yeah to meet people again and to. Uh, uh, to strengthen uh, the name of Verzet uh, and do something for the local uh, community because I think everyone is looking forward to uh, to connect with each other again. We want to uh, to do that also. But uh, the summer bar is one step in in this, and uh, we'll see uh, what we're going to do next. You have any festivals planned at the end of the year, or that's way too soon? Everybody is. Uh... Uh, at the end of the year, you mean? Yeah, correct. Um, we had some festivals planned, but uh, the, the main season is, is now. So a lot of them uh, are cancelled anyway. Um, but to be very honest, I didn't look into the agenda for, uh, for the end of the year because we're focusing on the, the following months now. Um, but I don't think there is so many in the at the end of the year, but there will be some uh, which who are not cancelled now and we'll see how that goes. Um, but the fact is that we do have more time now. Um, now the festivals have uh, have been cancelled. Uh, so 
we're going to see uh, what we can do with that time because sitting uh, sitting at home is not something we are used to. We did that a little bit more the last couple of months, so uh, I don't think that will be an option. Yeah, you um, mentioned already sitting at home. What was the impact for the brewery work-wise? You have to lower down the volumes, I assume? Exactly. So normally we brew about two or three times a week and two times uh, we bottle the beer. And now we, um, I think we did four bottlings uh, during these three months and about two brews. So practically nothing. Um, so our philosophy is to keep the stock, the stock very low and the beer as fresh as possible always. Um, so we didn't have a lot of stock. Um, and we didn't brew lots of stock also because we don't want the beer to be to be old. So now we are trying to start up again, but it all depends on the on the demand. Of course, we don't want to have too many stock, um, and that's why we didn't do a lot of production, which is very frustra frustrating for Alex and me because that's what we like to do. Um, but we had some more time to. Um, to work on the the strategy of the brewery and do some things that were on the list for maybe two or three years. Um, and Alex and me did all the packaging for the home deliveries and we did the home deliveries ourselves. And we were surprised how many time uh, we put in the, in that. So it's not that we uh, we were bored or something, but it's not it's not a um, yeah, we couldn't do what we really love to do. And uh, we're very happy that hopefully we'll start up again uh, very soon. All right, cool. Uh, final question. If you have to explain a brewery frisette to a six-year-old, how would you do it? <laughs> okay. Um, it's a surprising question. Uh, I'm imagining my son now because he's five five years old, so that's that could help a little bit. Um, yeah, it's uh, we yeah we are a company who makes beer, uh, but we wanted to do a little bit different. I think um, uh, we want to um, make beer that we like ourselves. We don't want to be the biggest brewery. We're a small team. Um, I don't know if the six years old will, will understand what I'm saying, but uh, I think that's, these are the essentials of, um, of what we wanted to do. We want to do, we want to do, uh, we want to be different. We want to be uh, authentic um, and we want to be a cool company, um, which people who can, uh, which people can identify with um, and be true and uh, ecological and moral and all that kind of stuff. All, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using words a six year old can never understand. I'm sorry for that, but I'm trying to, to put the, the essence of our brewery. You're using a strong moral compass as a craft brewer. Yes. And we're, um, we're trying to have that in mind with all the decisions we make. Um, when growing, it's not always easy, but uh, I hope we can uh, maintain doing that. Some very nice last words. Uh, cool. Thanks a lot and wish you all the best. And uh, see Thank you. you. Soon in the summer more. Probably. Cool. Stay safe. Bye bye. <laughs>